are there certain things in particular that you're looking for that may not be as obvious when you get to sit down with a guy? All we're looking for, all I'm looking for is authenticity. I don't want somebody that their agent thought we wanted to, to talk to or somebody that someone said they should be. You know, who, who is that player going to be uh, in the middle of the season you know, when they feel like and, and maybe things aren't going great, just looking for who that person is and you know, is there a willingness to learn, is there a willingness to, to, to put the team first and, and do whatever is asked of them. Welcome in to the 2023 NFL Combine in Indianapolis. She's Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. We're part of the overall coverage here with Coach Dave McGinnis and Rhett Bryan from Titans Radio. And you just saw comments from Mike Vrabel. As it's Titans Day here, everybody having a chance to speak, and it gave us a chance to sit down for only the second or third time with Rand Carthon, the Titans' new general manager. Absolutely. You're right, Mike. Today is the day that general managers, head coaches from across the NFL speak. But the Tennessee Titans were here, strongly represented, and it was great to have a chance to talk to the new GM. The new GM, very pleased with his team in the scouting department and how things are working already as he's been on the job now for just over a month. Obviously, being in Indianapolis, one of the primary goals is to evaluate all of the players that are, you know, participating in the Combine. But it's also an opportunity for you to really spend a lot of concentrated time with your staff. Mm -hmm. um, how are you going through that process of not only working together and kind of getting in lockstep with everybody, but also just kind of evaluating the chemistry of this group? Yeah, it's, it's time spent, right? So it started for me in particular um, – get the job, literally reach out to every single area scout. I knew the pro staff fairly well. Reach out to every single um, area guy, you know, just to have an opening conversation. Then Senior Bowl comes. We get to spend a week together uh, in the Senior Bowl. We go to dinner one night, just hang out, have fun. Then uh, last week they were all just in for four days for a meeting. So it's it's been a, a, a part of the process of spending more time together, getting to hear them in their space and actually giving them the opportunity to speak and speak how they feel about the players as openly as possible. And again, it allows me to evaluate, you know, not only our department, but our processes. And so last night, our area guys, our, you know, coordinators are in there running the meeting um, in terms of uh, meeting with the players. And again, it's another good portion for me to see because these guys are the ones that have been scouting them the last five, six years, right? So I can't come in and pretend to be an expert on these particular players from these uh, particular areas knowing that I hadn't been in there. So it's good to let these guys lead, take ownership of that process. And again, it allows me to not only evaluate them, but our processes as a whole. You can listen to our full interview with Rand Carthon from here in Indianapolis on the OTP that has just dropped. That's the official Titans podcast. You can get it at TennesseeTitans.com right here or anywhere you get your podcast. We'd love for you to subscribe to the OTP. Also had a chance to talk to NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah. We sure did. And, yeah, I mean, he is the authority on all things draft. So, of course, we had to ask him about the upcoming draft and a lot of the position groups that we're seeing right now. Rhett Bryan had a key question in all of it related to the pick for the Titans at number 11 by Daniel Jeremiah in his most recent mock draft. So <laughs> it's Paris Johnson Jr. You're talking yeah. about, but you have st already stood on the table for Peter Skronsky of, yeah. of Northwestern, and there's been debate that of everything I've read. That is he inside, better suited as a guard? Is he a tackle? Is he a tackle? I, th I think he can be a tackle. I do. And I had the same conversation, the same discussion on Elijah Vera Tucker when he was coming out of USC a couple years ago. So he goes to the Jets. And the Jets plug him in at guard, and he played at a really high level. And people said, see, we knew he was a guard. And then all of a sudden, tackle got hurt. They kicked him out to tackle. Turns out he's really good at both. <laughs> uh, so that, to me, is is Skaronsky. Now, it'll be big for him this week with the arm length just to see, you know, what that looks like. I know he's not a real long-arm guy. You're hoping they don't come in with in somewhere in the 31s. As long as he's in the mid-32s, or you know, I think he's, he's going to be fine. Um, but, yeah, I, I watched him on tape, and you watch guys – you know, it's really interesting when you look at the Big Ten and the SEC. I was talking to a, a, a scouting buddy who was on my flight, and I said, you know what would be interesting if a team just said, we're going to take all of our resources, we're going to stop scouting the whole country, we're going to stop going to all the small schools, and we're just going to put pour all of our resources into the SEC and the Big Ten, and we're only going to draft players from those two conferences. 
because the hit rate is higher because you see him playing against other NFL players on a weekly basis. It's a, it's really interesting how it's changed. I mean, when you look at the Big 12 and the number of draftable players and how low that number is, especially at some certain positions, the Pac-12 has dropped way down. The ACC has kind of been a one- or two-team league for the last few years. That the the football in the SEC and the Big Ten, it's almost like gosh, you just had a draft out of their farm two systems, players. basically. Yeah, yeah. But, but but to to, to get back to Skaronsky, like I've watched Skaronsky go up against NFL pass rushers throughout his career, so it makes the evaluation a lot easier. A lot of shaking going on before we get to that point, and a lot more mock drafts to come. Also, the first opportunity for us to visit with Tim Kelly, who. Quite frankly, I had never met nope. because he stayed so far away from everything last year. Absolutely. It was a great opportunity for us to actually talk to him, introduce ourselves, say hello, but also get some information about what this Titans offense could look like going forward. Here's Tim Kelly from our sit-down interview. I do want to ask the question about the second time around. Where, mm -hmm. where do you feel? you will be better as an offensive coordinator doing it for a second time. Yeah, um, you know, I was, I was talking to my wife about this just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, more confident, uh, more steadfast, I guess, if you will, in, in your beliefs and how you want things done. Um, in, in understanding that, you know, your values in terms of your philosophy is your philosophy for a reason. Um, and making sure that, that you're getting buy-in from, from the people that, that you're working with and, um, and you know, I would say, you know, I've got a clear vision as to what I, would, you know, what we want this thing to look like, uh, and 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 not wavering from that, and going in and, and being steadfast in it, um, and, and and making sure that we're getting every coach, every player to buy in, and, and make sure that again, when, when when these games start to count, however many months away it is from now, but that we're out there and, and, and we're we're able to put points on the board. Okay, that interview with Tim Kelly, along with Daniel Jeremiah and Rand Carthon all part of the OTP that has already dropped today. You can get it at TennesseeTitans.com or anywhere you get your podcast. That's the official Titans podcast. The acronym is the OTP. Jim Wyatt has a lot of great coverage at TennesseeTitans.com and we'll have updates. We'll also be posting our video interviews with different people from here during the course of the week. This is where you want to be at 5 o'clock every day, late afternoon with the Titans from the NFL Combine. That's it. So make sure that you are subscribed to the OTP. Make sure that you're tuning in on all social channels. The Tennessee Titans have got you covered. And then, of course, TennesseeTitans.com. And you can also follow Amy at TitansAmy on Twitter. You can follow Rhett Bryant at Rhett B. Tennessee. Jim Wyatt, our good friend, at J. Wyatt Sports. Again, all of them on Twitter. Any way you want it, we're going to have updates and information, anything that interests you about the NFL Combine. We're going to try to bring it to you all this week. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us at 5.